middle of verse 6, notice over here. They shed the blood of saints and prophets, so the whole world is blamed for that because they share the same spirit. And thou hast given them what? Blood to drink. So their, drink, so their water supply, see, is affected with blood. They're drinking blood. Why? For they are worthy because they deserve it. Because they shared that same spirit of all the saints and prophets who were murdered and killed throughout the past 2,000 years of church history with your 4,000 years of not just uh, Old Testament, Adam and Abel, but the Jewish people as well, how they persecuted the prophets. All right. Verse 7, And I heard another out of the altar say, So look at this. So, so another voice comes out and this comes out of the altar because remember up in heaven there is a temple and there is an altar there is not just one at jerusalem but there is also one within heaven remember that so we're talking about the one up in heaven so out of the altar say even so lord god almighty so uh, verily, certainly so, Lord God Almighty is his title. True and righteous are thy judgments. His judgments are true and righteous. Why would the altar say that? Why would, why would it voice it out? Because remember Revelation 8 and Revelation 6, your pastor pointed out to you that the uh, blood of the tribulation saints were held accountable and they were holding that over the altar. And then when God poured out his judgment, everything poured out of the altar pretty much, when he was doing those trumpets of judgment. All right, let's read verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. Ah, so then now the angel pours out the vial on the sun now. And then notice over here that the sun, that look, it starts to do something excessively. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So notice that angels uh, had the power, this angel had the power to scorch men with fire. Why? Because he poured the vial on the sun. So imagine the sun where it's already hot enough as it is in some countries, but then that heat just expands even more. And then that protective layer of the atmosphere is not going to help anymore. And then... you. Everyone's talking about, we got to rescue this earth from global warming. No, that, God's going to show you it doesn't matter how much you do. I'm, going to ex I'm just going to make this even worse now. So it's not going to help with global warming. And then guess what? Men are scorched with fire. That's how excessive this heat is. And men were scorched with great heat. Yeah, their skin is all scorched up. They're, they're, they didn't just get sun burnt. They got sun scorched. And blaspheme the name of God. Isn't that amazing? Instead of fearing God, they blaspheme him. They get angry at God. Oh, they wouldn't do that. You're not looking at the spiritual level again. After a natural catastrophe, what does the world do automatically? We repent, Lord. No, they say, why, God, did you allow this to happen? See, it's always critiquing God. It's always blaming God. That's the mentality of the people. But when, when you get really hit hard, guess what? It's not just critiquing, questioning, blaming God. It's like getting angry at God. So they blaspheme God's own name, which hath power over these plagues. Why? Because God has power over all the plagues. He's the one responsible for giving them the plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. They didn't repent. They didn't give him glory. That's messed up and sad. That's amazing. So we, your pastor mentioned before that if you look back at Revelation chapter 11, that after the post-tribulation rapture, you notice that there are people here who are fearing God and giving him glory. That's why Revelation 14, the angel gives them that opportunity to do it. So what does that mean then at Revelation 16? That means Revelation 16, we truly are, as your pastor mentioned before, what timeline of the tribulation? The end of the end, so to speak. So this is definitely near the end there. God, ex so basically all 
options to repent and mercy were exhausted by that point now. So truly his wrath is pouring out. <clears throat> Let's keep reading. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. So the fifth angel now pours out the vial upon the seat of the beast. Isn't that interesting? The seat of the beast. One, two, three, four, five. What is the seat of the beast? Well, it could be possibly, your pastor thought about that, it could be referring to Jerusalem, the temple, because the Antichrist is taking the seat, proclaiming himself to be God. But here's another possibility as well. And I found it interesting. Dr. Uckman mentioned it wasn't the seat at the Jerusalem temple, but this would make sense. What did the context of the book of Revelation showed you Satan's seat was? It was, it was all the way at Smyrna, Rome, right? Remember? Rome. So this is referring to the seat of Satan is at Rome. So God directly pours out his judgment on it, on that seat. You might say, why would he directly pour judgment on that seat? Because this seat is full of blasphemy. The Pope, in his inscription, it, uh, Vicarius Filii Dei, when you look only at the Roman numerals, totals down to 666. And I also heard that uh, uh, Muslim inscriptions or something that has to do with Muhammad is also locate, uh, connected with that seat in some way as well, which is interesting. But see, th that's why this seat is full of blasphemy. It's a seat full of blasphemy. So then the Lord pours out his judgment directly on that seat. Because that seat was always uh, filled with wickedness. It was a seat of power that dominated the world and made it all bloody. Now, it is very interesting. Your pastor did a, a research study. Uh, you might recall about how Game of Thrones, that the devil was trying to take some Ill, uh, things from the Bible. But it is interesting where everybody is slaughtering each other on the seat of power that caused a lot of uh, tyranny and hurt that at the end, this dragon just burned down that whole seat of power and destroyed it. Uh, yes. So it is, in, it is interesting how Satan, through his stories and fantasy, myths, fairy tales, etc., always tries to imitate what God's going to do later on. Anyways, let's return to our text over here. So God pours out his judgment directly on the seat. Why? It says, and his kingdom was full of darkness, because the Antichrist kingdom is going to be filled with darkness. What also supports this seat of the beast in context where it could be Rome is not just Romans 2 about where Satan's seat is, but also if you look at later on the passage at verse 19, it talks about Babylon. So that's why we see over here that the context, we can really see that there is a strong possibility it could be referring to the Pope's seat. Now, when God pours it out, that means his Roman kingdom is filled with darkness. Because why? The Roman Catholic Church, the Antichrist kingdom, when he rules over the whole world, it will all be Catholic. It is a Catholic communist form. We already saw the ideology and the roots of communism at Revelation chapter 13. Your pastor already showed that. The economy and then the health industry, etc., and not only the technology world, we're leaning more toward this. You notice that? Because of the coronavirus situation that happened. Why? Because the Antichrist has to have this kind of power, this kind of world, where people think it's all about equality. But the government makes sure everyone gets an equal amount of power. See, that's how the Antichrist fools people. That's why he proclaims peace and safety, right? When the Bible says it's actually destruction. So that's how the Antichrist will do it to rule over the world, but it's going to be religious, and the religion that we see throughout the entire book of Re Revelation undoubtedly is Catholic, 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 Catholic. Amen. Yep. So his, the whole Roman Empire, so to speak, is filled with darkness. So now look at this. Now, why did I draw it out? Because now that I draw it out, Think about if this was one of you. This, this was you. Okay? Now look. You were inflicted with leprosy. Okay? So then, uh, you're using water to minister to those people at the hospitals. 
But now the, the ocean gets infected with blood. So then people are like scurrying and saving all the water, just like they're doing with toilet paper right now, and then they're all grabbing the water supply, and then God puts that as, uh, he puts blood in that. So now this poor person, this poor soul is infected and hurting, and he, the person is dying of thirst. And then God just makes it worse by putting the vial on the sun, and then the guy is dying really of thirst while the skin is being scorched to a T. And with that scorched skin, that's not making his sores even better. So he's in so much pain over here. And then not only that, now that uh, he's scorched with so much sunlight, sunlight, God makes it dark. You would think that people are, people are trying to find the beneficial side. Well, the sun, you know, with so much solar energy, it could help our world, you know, perhaps. But no, the Lord just puts so much darkness. The Lord's not giving them a break. Now, God could either shut off the sun and make it dark, or he could do simultaneously. And you might think that's impossible, but think about hell. Yeah. Hell is known as a place of outer darkness, yet fire. Yeah. Have you ever heard of black fire before, etc.? So God can make it like really dark and then also something that can really scorch you, that can really hurt you. Think about that. That's not a pretty picture. Now, if you think after looking at all of this that wouldn't you like to get saved right now in yeah. Jesus Christ so that you don't have to go through this time of the tribulation? His kingdom was full of darkness, verse 10. That's why what? And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Yeah, they're gnawing in pain because they're not getting a break after everything. And uh, But notice it's interesting. They gnawed in pain from the darkness, right? Think about it. The Bible says that hell is a place of outer darkness, but also what? Gnashing of teeth. There's something about this darkness that not only uh, even if there's fire that can make it dark, but it just causes pain in some way. See, this is not a pretty picture during the tribulation. It is not a pretty picture. So this is going to be hell on earth then. So it is accurate to say the tribulation will be like hell on earth, so to speak. All right, verse 11. And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. No kidding. So they're blaspheming God because of the pain that they're going through, the sore that they're going through. And repented not of their deeds. They still would not repent. What a sad, tragic world. You would think they would learn their lesson. 